Being in a candlelight service and being in an evening service will be different normally than we what we normally do uh, on Sunday mornings, which is we have uh, songs put together. And then, so today, what we're actually going to do tonight is have readings from four different people, and in between each reading, we'll have some songs. And then at the end, I'm going to share a message. And then tonight, we're as a um, physical reality of a spiritual truth. We're going to light some candles. Amen. We're going to say, Christ is shining in my heart. And so the first person um, I wanted you to get to know, one of my children, and, and that is Haven Ariella. She's nervous as all get out to come up here and do this. But uh, I ask that you would welcome Haven to come and do our first reading. Merry Christmas. So glad that you came to our Christmas Eve service. Today we have been praying that you will be a special time for your family. 2,000 years ago it was a special evening for a group of blue collar workers called the Shepherds. They were the ones who slept in the cold, fought off various beasts, and smelled like sheep. God chose these Shepherds to announce Christmas has come. In Luke 2.10 it reads, the angels said to the shepherds, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of good, great joy for all the people. They had three proclamations about the birth of Jesus, and the first is that Jesus is good news. Why is Jesus good news? Because of the incarnation of fancy theology where that means that God sent himself. He did not send a Hallmark card on Christmas. God did not send a gift card or a package in the mail. He didn't even send an angel for a full message, just a part of it. Instead, he said himself, and this is good news. The second proclamation is that Jesus is great joy. Holiday seasons can be tough times. This season turns up the volume on everything. Our blessings seem greater, but our losses seem deeper. God sees your tears and can tenderly turn them to joy. How? Joy comes through Jesus, because God sent something beautiful into an imperfect, often ugly world. The third proclamation is that the gift of J is for all the people. He came to the poor so he could give up his heavenly riches. He came to the weak so he became a baby, giving up his power. He came to reach the dirty so he was born of a virgin. He came to reach the lost so he traded the throne of Jesus for a small town on earth. He came to reach the lost, so he traded the, the, the throne in heaven for a small town on earth. He came to reach the hungry, so he was born through a feeding trough, a manger. He came to reach those who battled with addictions and hurts, so he came in the flesh. He came to reach those who needed to be born again, so he was born. This message is for all people. White, black, brown, poor, rich, healthy, sick, Blue collar, white collar, unemployed. All people, this means you. Merry Christmas. Yeah! This means me and means you. And so let's sing, O come, all ye faithful. Amen. Would you please stand and sing? <laughs> Joyful and triumphant, O oh, come ye, O oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold Him, born the King of angels. O oh, come, let us adore Him. O oh, come, let us adore. and not 
created. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Sing choirs of angels, sing in exultation. Sing, all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet Thee for this happy morning. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Merry Christmas again, everyone. All right. So after announcing that Jesus was good news of great joy for all people, the angels tell the shepherds in the fields the following from Luke 2, verse 11. Today, in the city of David, a Savior was born for you, who is Christ the Lord. Let's look at the ways that God's angels describe Jesus. The first one being, Jesus is a Savior. The Jewish nation was looking for a Savior from oppression. They were looking for a political revolutionary who would free them into a golden age of prosperity. Today, we are free and can thank God that we live in America, the greatest nation in the world. We still, however, need a Savior. Why do we need a Savior? I need my past forgiven. I need hope when I see the world today so hurt by sin. And I need to know that when I face God, I am forgiven and will enjoy Him forever. Jesus is my Savior. Is He your Savior tonight? Yes, thank you, Lord. The next thing that the angel said is Jesus is the Christ. What's another word for Christ? That's right. Remember, sorry, Christ was not Jesus' last name. It wasn't Jesus Christ, son of Mary Christ and Joseph Christ. Jesus, or sorry, Christ is his title. Christ is the Greek equivalent of the Hebrew word Messiah, which means promised one from God. Many carried the name Jesus in that day, but there was only one Jesus Christ. There was only one Jesus, the anointed one. The last thing that I is that the angels pro proclaimed Jesus is the Lord. Even at his birth, Jesus that he truly is. Think of it. For you and I as believers, Jesus is both our friend and our Lord. 
It's not often that people have a close relationship with someone we would consider our Lord. We tend to keep our distance from those who would have such power over our lives. But Christmas means that our Lord, our Christ, our Savior has come close. He wants to be your closest friend with all your heart. He has come so that you might have a friend in him. That is what makes the night so holy and so awesome. The Lord of the universe has shown up in a babe and is pursuing our hearts. So let's get ready to sing the night. As he comes and shares. Can you imagine that night? Christ showed up. Amen. Merry Christmas. While the shepherds got a clear message of hope, there was another that night that was fraught with anxiety. It was Joseph, Jesus' earthly stepfather. 
in order to calm his fears, another angel had to appear to him. The angel told Joseph in Matthew 1.21, She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus in English was actually Heshua. Is that right? <laughs> in Hebrew. It is a name that means rescuer or deliverer. He shares the name of the man who led the people of Israel into the promised land. Can you think of a name that more clearly identifies as Jesus' purpose and the promise that he, his life holds? Pause and think of the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us that salvation is found in the name of Jesus and his name alone in Acts 4, 11 through 12, tells us Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. The Bible tells us that we are forgiven through the name of Jesus. Acts 10, 43 says, all the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The Bible tells us that in the name of Jesus comes healing and miracles. Acts 3.16 shares the story of a man who was healed. Listen to how the apostles describe how he was healed. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man, whom you see and know, was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that, come, faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. The Bible tells us even to pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus teaches believers to pray in his name, that is, to pray in his authority. Jesus said, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. John 14, 13 through 14. In every way, Jesus lives up to his name. The name Jesus reminds us of the power, presence, and purpose of the risen Christ. Thank God for Jesus. He is the King of Kings. Let us sing.
Till the stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead was from their tombs, and the angels stood in love, for the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame, now this gospel truth. As the angels had spoken to Joseph and to the shepherds, they had a choice. Let's take a look at how the shepherds responded to the angels. Luke 2, 15 to 16 tells us, When the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Their response was obedience. These shepherds discovered who Jesus is because of a four-word decision. Let's go to Bethlehem. Why did they go? Because they believed what God had said. If they hadn't gone like the angels told them, they would have spent another ordinary night in the fields. But they would have always wondered. Our world is filled with people who are stuck in the fields outside Bethlehem, wondering. You can stop wondering by simply trusting what God has said. Are you willing to trust and obey this Christmas Eve? We're told that Jesus fulfilled prophecy hundreds of years old. He did miracles that no one else could do. He claimed he was God. He said, I and the Father are one, in John 10.30. And he who has seen me has seen the Father, in John 14.9. Then he backed it up. They murdered him for such claims by hanging him on the cross. They said, if you really are the king and if you really are who you say you are, then do something. So he rose from the dead. We celebrate Christmas because Jesus is alive today. All you have to do is respond. Just respond. He's already knocked. Just answer. He's left a message in your messenger. Just message him back. He sent you a text. Just respond. He's left an email in your inbox. Hit that reply button. He's calling you. Answer that call. Return the call. He has spoken into your heart. Just call out to him, and you will be saved. Amen. I need to be reminded often of what this whole Christmas thing is about, you know. Um, I had uh, a lot going on this year. A huge move trying to figure out what's next for uh, my daughters who are in college and helping them go on to the next thing 
thing of uh, moving here and trying to figure out when's the right time, when is the Lord leading to start and, and, and leave and all these things. And, and in the middle of it all, I, I, I left a career in social work and all these things and, and had to wrap all that up. Um, and I, I could have really easily forgot what Christmas was supposed to be about. Because Christmas is, is really what, you know, when it comes to the time of Christmas, I, I realized for me, um, I struggled growing up with Christmas. For me, Christmas was always about the presents and always seeing my parents argue. And all, really, it really, Christmas was more about this is the longest part of the year than, you know, the darkest part of the year. The, the darkness is the longest part, right? Rather than Christmas being about Jesus came, right? I didn't grow up in the church. I didn't grow up in the church. Could you hit the next slide for me there? Because I think it's important for us to understand that sometimes God needs to get our attention. Yes. And so I think it's significant that the angels of what we're hearing about is first and foremost said, first words, fear not. Right? Why in the middle of Christmas would you need to be say, hey, don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Well, first off, if I was a shepherd and I was in dealing with all my sheep and I knew all my stuff about the sheep and all of a sudden this angelic being shows up, I would be a little scared, right? So I need that. But I really think it's because we need to understand first and foremost, Christmas is about the fact that God is still involved and has not forgotten you. So therefore, Christmas is a time you can release your fears. Yes. 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 See, you, you might say, well, I'm not really afraid, right? I, I've, I, maybe you've grown up in the church. Maybe you have a good testimony. Maybe, maybe you have a good life, and, and there's not a lot of things to be afraid of. But I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people out, even in Mascuta, that aren't going to tell you they're afraid, but they're worried. Yeah. What's going to happen with this economy? What's going to happen with this next election? What's going to happen with, with uh, how my kids are going to grow up and the values and things? The world's changing so quick, and they're afraid. Depression's on the rise. Drug use is on the rise. Things are on the rise because they need to hear the first words. Jesus. An angelic messenger has come to say, fear not. Christmas is a time to release your fears. Wow. Because oftentimes when we show up to church, I'll be honest with you, we're a little scared. It is my first time uh, uh, as the official pastor here, right? So, I mean, I preached twice here, but this is this is it, right? This is well, here we are from Sunday on. We're we're rolling. Uh, I, it's easy for me to maybe to be a little scared to just tell you who I really am, because church people, you you know about church people, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know a little bit about right. We we can be honest on Christmas, right? Uh, but it's easy to come to church, put a mask on. Say, hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. Things could be horrible. But I'm telling you, if we usually really do take this time to say, hey, Christmas is a time to release my fears, and I need to hear this. When the angel said, fear not, that was for me. See, here's the thing. I'm going to ask, your name is? Robert. Robert. And the, can I ask the other Robert? Yeah, the other Robert. Come on up. We got Robert, Robert, and Robert. Hey. So, um, uh, Robert, could you hand these out to each person? Ooh, I'll get it. I'll get it. See, I'm going to hand these out during this time to remember that Christmas is a time to release our fears because. You might be afraid about our little church and where it's going. Do we have the resources to make it through the next season? Do we have the, the, a, a way to move forward? Do, are we going to make it? Or is my fat? Or maybe you're dealing with some things personally, right? You, you got bad news and, and, the, and, and time, Christmas is a time to release your fears. I want you to remember that inside of you, if you're a Christian here today, you have been given the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay? Every Christian has the Holy Spirit. It's, it's a free gift, right? 
Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? So it's not like, like those of us who are uh, uh, do those crazy charismatic things are super spiritual. Every single person who believes or a Christian, who says, I believe in Jesus, has the Holy Spirit. So what that means is, by you taking this candle, you have what's inside of you to hold a flame. That you don't have to be afraid. Because this darkness that this world wants to throw at you, you have inside of you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, the light holder. But God wants to give you a fire. That's why He doesn't stop there. He doesn't just say, hey, don't be afraid. The second thing that I want you to notice in this, it says, fear not. The second thing, He says, Christmas is a time to release your fears, but it's also a time to renew your faith. Some of you need to be on fire again. Amen. I know I do. That's why he said he doesn't mince words. He's angel. This angel shows up. He doesn't mince words, right? He says, listen, I bring you good news of great joy. I like how the King James put it. I bring you glad tidings of great joy, right? That you that will be for all people. All people. You, me, everyone out here in the streets, everyone in Mascuda, everyone who, who lives on the Air Force Base, everyone up there working up at, at Boeing, everyone, it's for all, people who haven't even got a job anymore, everybody. It's for every single person. Amen. But they don't know about the fire that could happen if we renew our faith here in our church. Yes, amen. Yeah. Because here's the thing. We're not talking about a fire that just kind of happens. We're talking about a fire that is sung about in the gates of heaven. Like heaven came to earth is the picture of Christmas. So let me tell you what's going on right now in heaven. And then I saw each of the four living creatures had six wings, and they were covered with eyes around the inside and outside, and the angels sang day and night. They never stopped. Holy, 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 Lord God the Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. And then they saw the Lamb, and they sang the Lamb of the song, the, the song of the Lamb, and it said, Our Lord and God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power, because you've created all things, and by your will they existed before they were created. You're worthy to take the scroll and open up the seal. You are blessing and honor and glory and power. Be the one seated to the throne, to the Lamb, forever and ever. And that is the blessing of the fire that we have available to us. Right? Don't remove that baby. It's all good. Let, let them sing out. Praise the Lord. Because let me tell you about Christmas. It means I get to be born again and get to sing like a baby again. That's just a reminder to me of what Christmas is. And if it annoyed anybody, let's, get a, let's pull our masks off and stop being churchy. Let's start being real. Because the angel said, fear not. I'm bringing you glad tidings of good noise. Right? Maybe that will turn into good noise. But the thing is this. Here it is. He said to this, Unto you today, in the city of David, is born, release my fears, renew my faith, and receive forgiveness. Unto you is born a Savior. The readings talked about our past needing forgiven and our present having purpose and our future having a glory. But tonight... You know, I need my bills paid, and I need uh, my medical health to get better, and I need uh, my family uh, to get it together. You know, I need all these things. But Christmas makes me stop and think, I need a Savior. I really do. And Jesus came for it. See, Jesus does not want you to walk out of here with, the, with a, just a candle uh, that is just something you do as a ritual every Christmas Eve and having a candlelight service. Jesus wants you to walk out as an act of faith saying, hey, God's given me the Holy Spirit. He's given me a Savior. So God, tonight... I release my fears. I renew my faith. 
I receive forgiveness. Light my fire again. Imagine what would happen if the fire of God is working inside of you. How your family would change. How your finances would change. How your blessed healing would happen. God has come not just so we can play religion. God has come so we can cry like babies out to Him and hear a Savior answer, I am here. Amen. So I'm going to ask that the lights be dimmed. I'm going to ask this, uh, we're going to sing a song called Silent Night as, as I uh, hand uh, this, or as we start to pass the light that came from the middle of the Christ candle. What I would like you to do is, Robert, I'm going to use yours as an example, is instead of the person who has the light to go like that, because then all the wax would drip, receive it as an act of faith by leaning towards the light and being lit again with the power of God and of love in your life. May we sing about this incident that happened 2,000 years ago. Fear not, for I bring glad tidings of good news for all people. That today, this day, in the city of David, a Savior is born, who is Christ the Lord. May your faith be renewed. shepherds were surrounded oh, by light. Cool. We'll get this technical difficulty. It's all right. Let's stand. Yeah.
light Radiant beams from thy holy face With the dawn of redeeming grace Jesus, Lord, at thy Lord, at thy birth. I'd like to, as we done something and put a new wish, a new prayer, a new hope in your heart. And tonight is a night that you've let the light shine again. Or maybe you've letting it, you've been letting it shine, but tonight is a night that you want to just say it. I would like to hear from the congregation, the people here. You heard from me. But what is your hope? What is a Christmas wish uh, uh, from your lips to God's ears that you would want for this church, for this town, for your family, that, that God, would you do this? Would someone be so bold to be willing to share that? Let's start us off. Well, I thank the Lord very much. I thank the Lord for our candlelight service tonight and so many people that's come. This is a blessed church. And I'm praying. And God gave me a dream one night and told me that every one of these chairs were going to be filled because this community needs this church. And when you came in and spoke to us, and when you did the last service here and you spoke about fire, I've been talking about that, and God's just been laying that on my heart about the fire is going to be in this church back again, as it was years and years ago. And that's what God wants. And I love the Lord so very much, and I thank Him for everything He's done for me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Merry Christmas. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else have a testimony or a hope that they would like to share tonight? I hope to see revival. Amen. I hope to see revival. Revival is being renewed and strengthened in God and only in God, not the world, but in God. And knowing that it's only Him that's going to get us through. Amen. Not the world, but God is. And He's our strength. He's the fire that lives inside us. He's the revival. He revives us every day, every minute. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs> amen. amen. Just this little sack. Oh, we got one. Just wanted to say that COVID tried to get everybody down and put us all out. Things were stifled. People were worried. People were in great distress. But I'm here to say that God is still in control. We are on the move. And like he said, fear not. Amen. 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 I just want to say, um, I've been here six years now, and I'm glad the Lord that brought me here from Pennsylvania to this church family. I've never felt more loved than being here and all the people that he put in my life and all the blessings he's poured out to me that I didn't deserve. But oh, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
I know that there's probably some unspoken, and maybe even one for you.